as well of it. So we've been talking a lot about collaboration today. And there are a couple of things that are really relevant for collaboration and really principles of collaboration. One of them is communication. And Peter mentioned also yesterday transparency. We talked about also power. That is something that we still need to address. And what else am I forgetting on collaboration? Sorry. <laughs> Felipe, what else am I forgetting about collaboration? Principles of collaboration? Yeah. Shout out loud. Okay, so we dealt with the theory of collaboration. Yesterday we saw the fish game. Today we've been talking about all of these things. And so what? I mean, so what? We need to deal with collaboration with sustainability, but also with sustainable public procurement, right? So I'm going to start boring you today with what is public procurement? Yes, just exactly after lunch, that's exactly what you need because nobody knows about public procurement, right? I didn't know about this thing. Remember, I'm not a lawyer, so I had to learn about this thing before we wrote the paper. So we know that it is a key thing about the government. Yeah. It refers to the acquisitions of goods and services by government and public sector organizations, by blah, 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 public contracts, blah, 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 blah. You already know this crap. Okay. This is what we've been talking about for a long time, although we have not put it down in, in a graphical form. Yeah, and we, we talk, talk about, about the public and, uh, and uh, procurement and supplier, and we talk about the, the preparation stage, we talk about specification stage, sorting stage, and utilization stage. And Peter has been really telling a lot of things, Peter and Peter have been talking about that the connection between the supplier and the buyer is not here. Okay? There's no collaboration in the beginning. Now we're talking about traditional public procurement. Okay? It is once you source, so you prepare your tender, list your tender, somebody wins the tender, usually based on cost. And that's when you, the, the collaboration, if we can call it that, starts. So you sign your, your legal agreements, and if they don't fulfill them, you sue them. Okay? That's more or less what it is, very linear. Okay? And this is how we can see it. So we have the raw materials that go to a supplier that has into production. They have the technical specifications coming from the tender. Then you have a price per unit. You have a product, you deliver the product. You get, of course, your payment. Um, what is it, three months here? 30 days? In the US, I've heard that some procure, some uh, uh, suppliers get it one year later. And then you have a procurer and you have waste. Perfect, right? More or less. Okay, remember I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert on procurement. What is SPP? Well, the same thing that we've been talking about, but we need to incorporate environmental and maybe some social issues or social concerns throughout the entire process. Yeah, you all agree on that? I told you it was going to be very, very boring just after lunch. If a public, if all public authorities in the EU switched to green electricity, we could save more than 60 billion tons of CO2, give or take. That's not according to me, that's according to DEA. So it might be even high. And if we use energy efficient desktop computers, another 830,000 uh, 830, tons of CO2. This doesn't sound that bad, right? But then we need to convince the um, procurers to buy them. And if they've been doing their job for the last 35 years, you think they're going to listen to us? No. Okay, so UNEP, you know this already. UNEP set up this, this um, initiative to promote sustainable public procurement aimed at the consumption side, but also linking the production side and putting it together through what we call the development of sustainable business models. I'm not going to be talking at length of sustainable business models. There are several papers on that. We can send them to you if you want. Uh, Schalteger, Obward, I also wrote a paper about that, of course, you know, I have nothing else to do. Uh, we have in the literature of SPP, we have the process itself. We have the link between sustainable public procurement and businesses. We talked also about the links to product service systems. Have you ever heard about uh, 
PSS, not SPP, but PSS. Now we do PSS for SPP. Yeah, product service system is that you don't have only a product, you have product that can become a service, for example, photocopiers in universities. Long ago, probably before everybody was born except me, universities would buy photocopiers and then Xerox said, well, I won't sell you the photocopier, I will sell you the service of photocopying. And therefore now no university, very few universities buy the photocopiers. What they buy is the service of that. And then Xerox or Canon or whatever, they sell you the service, but that service comprises a product. That's what we call product service systems, P PSS for SPP. Then we have also eco-design. We talked briefly yesterday about eco-design, fairly similar to eco-efficiency, but you design your products from the beginning in the, in the design stage to become more reusable, more, re more recyclable, et cetera, et cetera. We have something that you're already experts on, and Maria talked about it, that, that at length yesterday, having EMAS and ISO 14001, and ISO 14 and 41 and 43 and 46 and uh, yeah. We also have barriers to change and drivers for collaboration between procurement process and actors. That's very much organizational change management theory. Okay? We have the need for research on social cultural issues. And we have done a little bit of that. We have supplier selection. We have the effects of cultural and political framings for SPP. We talked a little bit in the previous session about these issues. But there's still limited, or there was still limited research on systems considering more than the justice supplier and procurer collaboration. That was 2016, so six years ago. And Felipe, uh, how is the research going at the moment on this particular one? No, we don't have. We still don't have a law. Okay, so yes, you have a PhD. <laughs> so great, collaboration, blah, blah, blah. We know that we harvest these benefits and Maria told you about seven benefits or nine benefits, somewhere around there that come from collaboration. But she also presented in the previous session that yes, you can have benefits, but yes, you have challenges. To what extent do you collaborate? And that's a big question. That requires exchange of information as we've been talking about, coordination of activities, communication, respect between the partners, and when it comes to uh, collaboration for CE, you know about uh, circular economy, right? Circular economy is the same thing as industrial ecology, but now you put money in front of that. Uh, it was developed by Leontief, a Russian um, scientist who did his PhD in Germany and first established the, the concept of circular economy in 1928. Uh, many of you were not born yet. Some of us were, okay? And that has become now not only a circular economy. Circular economy was only about economic issues in the beginning, 1928 it was only about economic issues. Now we are linking it to environmental issues and circular economy came out kind of parallel in two ways. One was in China uh, as almost a synonym to cleaner production. And the other one was in Germany and it's been also done through the um, Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So in pretty much a very short way of talking about circular economies, close the loops. But there's a difference between, between circular economy and industrial ecology. In circular economy, you want to add a dollar sign or a Swedish crown sign or euro sign or whatever you want to call it before you close those loops. There's a lot of research on circular economy that does not, mention economy is just about closing the loops that's not circular economy and it is about recovery you remember the organizational sustainability framework that i showed you there was a little black arrow green arrow coming back recovery I and mean, we can do it through the three hours nine hours 20 hours whatever we talk about resource efficiency we talk about eliminating waste but we need to know how much of that cost we also talk about circular economy stakeholders. We talk about governments and companies. Of course, you know, we're talking about sustainable public procurement who are the uh, usual suspects, government and companies. Uh, and then we also, you know, that's already been said before, but because you're kind of half asleep after lunch, then I have to repeat it several times. Or is it because I'm half asleep? I'm sleep dreaming, I'm sleepwalking. Yeah, okay. Sustainable public procurement, we already know about those things. And that's already been said. Business models, 
what is a business model? More or less a description on how a business should operate and add value. In this case, we're talking about economic value. Okay? In the previous one, I told you we can add value in organizations in different ways. This is about money, money, money. Show me the money and how value is created. We articulate how we propose that value and how we deliver that value. This is purely managerial approach on, just on business models. And it is based on three main elements. One, value proposition, value creation, and value capture. So you remember about that value thing? Now we are want to propose it, create it, and capture it. Am I going too fast? I'm going too slow? Okay. What do we mean by sustainable business models? Well, the same thing that we've been talking throughout the day, yesterday and today, but now we have to add sustainability and make the things a lot more complex. Thank you. And we need to take into consideration a number of factors. One is technological. We discussed that also with sustainability. You remember yesterday talking about technocentric. We need to talk about uh, into consideration technology that includes materials, energy efficiency, create value from waste. Talk about social. That means delivers functionality. We talk about functionality with LCA. We talk also about functionality in somewhere else. I forgot. Instead of having the ownership. So as we talk about with the photocopiers, I don't own the photocopier, but I have the function of photocopying. We adopt the stewardship role and we encourage sufficiency. And we also have what uh, Bokken has called the organizational. Uh, repurpose the business for society and environment and develop scale up solutions. As I mentioned in the previous session, it's about definitions. Okay. Bokken defines social in that way and organizational in that way. I particularly find social in a different way and an organizational way. So whenever you're writing your thesis, whenever you're writing a paper, make sure that in your introduction, you start defining your terms and how you're going to be using them. Otherwise, people are going to say, yeah, but organizational doesn't mean that. I say, no, but that's the one I'm using, okay? So in the traditional public procurement, we want to buy a product at the cheapest cost possible. And as I say, I'm not a lawyer and I, what I knew back then in 2016, I knew there were three options. One was on cost, the other one was on price and the other one was on something else that you can add the environmental stuff, but I haven't followed the rules of public procurement and the laws of public procurement. So I don't, I'm not very sure on that. You have that the lowest price of the overall cost. But in SPP, what we want to focus is on the most value for money. So it's not about cost, it's not about price, but it's about providing the most value for your buck, for your money. And when we did this, when we wrote this paper, the EU regulation was offering this, those three options, was cost, price, or value for money. Maybe it has advanced, I don't know, I'm not, I haven't followed it, but if you know, let me know and then, or let Felipe know and he'll deal with it. Okay. Uh, we want to change in sustainable public procurement, we want to change to, for, from PP to SPP through PSP. PPSP. Okay, so we want to change from selling a product to selling a product service combination, product service system. So instead of selling a product, you might lease the product, you might rent the product, or something like that. So you now have to change your mindset from selling a product and charging for a product or a kilogram of a product to charging for the functionality of the product. You remember functionality? We talked about functionality in LCA. Why? Because it's important when you want to compare to products. But it's also here because now I'm not going to buy a hundred of something. Now I'm going to buy the service of providing that 100. Oh, that is complicated, right? Now call the accountants because the lawyers are not enough to define the, the functionality because now we need the accountants to put a price on a function and the accountants go like, but I've never done that before. And believe you and me, that's what they tell you. I said, how do I price a function where my VAT is telling me that I have to pay for the price of something, but the VAT is not set up for a function. And that's when we need collaboration between the supplier and the, and the buyer to say, okay, now if I, as a supplier, I'm going to tell you the function, 
you might not be happy about it. But you as a buyer, you might want to tell me, that's my function, I'm not going to be happy about it. So if we sit down together, we can together come out with that function and with that price that benefits both. And benefits both, hey, we're talking about collaboration, right? Because everybody needs to have uh, some benefit in the in collaboration. And you have to, you want to do that in the beginning of the tender. And yesterday we talked about open collaboration that goes not against Italian corruption laws, but that is open and transparent from the beginning. You invite everybody and everybody collaborates and then you develop the specifications together. Sometimes governments develop specifications that are completely wrong because the suppliers cannot fulfill them or that those specifications are so low that the suppliers tell you, but we were doing that 30 years ago. We have gone past that. So if you start doing that in the beginning, that you can set up your specifications, you can set up your function, you can set up, I wouldn't say the price because that was against the EU competition law and against corruption laws, but you can collaborate and you can set up those things. So we go from whatever we had before, yeah, to now a connection in the beginning. Yeah. And that is possible according to EU regulation. And then we have sustainable and collaborative public procurement. Now, long-term collaboration during a SPP process requires a shift from only technical specifications to social, cultural, and non-technical specifications. So we are not now, we're now it's passing from just specifying, I want a chair that has four legs. No, I want a chair that has four legs, that is for somebody who's uh, taller and has economic things. So you start adding other types of specifications. And you also need to add social, cultural specifications. So if you're in Sweden or, or if you're, uh, a, a, very tall Polish German guy, then you might need some different social cultural specifications. Swedes tend to be very tall, but if you go, for example, to Glasgow, where people are, tend to be rather short, you won't be able to tell them to have the same type of uh, height of tables. So you need those type of things here. Uh, those technical and non-technical specifications drive the supplier and procurer to develop products and services together that will be taking into consideration resource efficiency. And the social cultural specifications will help the parties hire and train personnel specifically for a co-development program process. And this is key to SPP, hire and train. And that is becoming a major problem in SPP for PSS for BPP. And you remember this one, right? We had a linear approach where we designed the price for a product or for products. But we say we want to change that to a function. Yeah. So we change that to a price per service functional unit. Now we have a value. We have collaboration between the suppliers and the procurers. We have a supplier that provides a service. The procurer uses the product and then we have recovery. In the middle, we have shared responsibility of the products and services. We have technical and non-technical and social cultural specifications, and we have reduced the raw materials and we have reduced the waste of the entire system. Because now we're using concepts of eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness, systems thinking, life cycle thinking, and collaboration. Okay, so we need to take into consideration all these things, technical, non-technical, technical, social cultural specifications, shared responsibility, product service combination. And we can then reduce the raw materials, the energy and waste generation whilst promoting sustainable business models for the supplier side and better contributing to society, making societies much more sustainable. Sounds utopian and very beautiful, right? Yes. But is that even feasible? And I have to tell you, yeah, it is feasible. I have two ladies there who are going to talk to us a little bit later. But first, I'm going to absolutely destroy the project that we did together because I don't understand it still. And then they're going to tell you that no, Rosie is completely wrong. Uh, and uh, But no, if I'm wrong, just shout and they'll probably do it. Uh, so we have a Swedish lightning case, which is different than lighting. So we don't have lighting, just lightning. And that's about lights and not a, a god of thunder Thor throwing things at us. 
Yeah. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, call Thor, okay? Mea culpa. Uh, we know about uh, sustainability, Agenda 21. Everybody knows about Agenda 21, right? Economic, environmental, social, most things. We need to include stakeholders. We've been talking about stakeholders since uh, Frascati in April this year. Local communities, employees, shareholders, business partners, blah, 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 blah. And we talk about stakeholder collaboration, but you have you heard about a triple helix? Yes, you have. No, you haven't. You know about the DNA? You have a double helix? Uh, you have a double helix in the DNA? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is fairly similar to that. But instead of having a buyer supplier, you add an extra party to that. And then in that case, it's usually university. So you have industry, government. Yeah, sounds like public procurement. But you have a university as a third party. So instead of having a double helix, now you have a triple helix. Mm -hmm. It's about collaboration between a university, industry, and government. So now we're making the N tuples. You remember N tuples that Maria mentioned? Okay, now instead of having two tuples, we have three tuples. And somebody ate my cake. <laughs> and then we have, yes, guess what? The quadruple helix. And that is an extension of the triple helix where the fourth helix is civil society. So now we're making things a little bit more complicated. Now as we go back to the systems thinking and say, yeah, it's damn complicated, but now we know how to deal with it. We can draw it. Yeah. And guess what? It gets even, even more complicated. Now we have a quintuple helix. And that is based on the uh, triple helix, quadruple helix. And then we also add the natural environment of society into account. So on top of all the things that I've been telling you about, we just add the natural environment that Maria was talking about in the collaboration session just before lunch just to make things more complicated. Yeah? Valentin is looking a bit like- Can we quickly recap on natural environment? It's uh, taking into consideration the environment as a stakeholder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, traditional public procurement, government, industry. Yeah? Triple helix, we add university. Quadruple helix, we add civil society. Quintuple helix, we are the environment as a stakeholder. So just to make things rather complicated. It's like putting two and a half DNAs all together. And I'm not going to go there. Okay. Public procurement in Sweden. Yes. I was just going to ask civil society. Does that include, for example, workers? And yeah. Maybe, like the, whole... the whole thing, the, the whole enchilada, as the Americans would say. <laughs> you put everything in there. You just go absolutely crazy and just add a bit more and then you add some sauces and then you add some cream and then some cheese and then you're like, whoa. So public procurement in Sweden, they are the experts. I'm just going to try to get by and say it, all public entities are required to procure all products and services used. Our university is a public entity, so I'm a civil servant. I'm not a bureaucrat, I'm a civil servant. Big difference, okay? Some authorities have their own departments and or use of joint purchasing centers. Yeah. And some of the contractors are responsible for the procurement of the municipalities. We still don't know what happens with the other ones. So we just put out some and we are all happy. In some counties areas, they have merged into so-called shopping centers. Yeah? Or maybe that's a Swedish English translation. And some have created a joint purchasing organization for a whole county. This allows procurers and buyers to have different conditions and time to work. You okay? You want a candy? No? Uh, the procurement process begins when the municipality makes a request to the procurer to procure a product or a service and a request document is written. So more or less you write the tender, send it to somebody and say, okay, now I fulfill my technical specifications. And the public traders usually use it, use it, not use is, to gather companies to discuss the upcoming procurement, but it is rare that their knowledge about the market and end users needs are being utilized. Pay special attention to this word. Have you seen this word before? Mm -hmm. In which definition? Sustainable development. development. The needs of this generation and future generation and blah, 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 blah generations, okay? So needs generation, needs fulfillment is very, very important here. And that's thanks to 
those two ladies over there and they're pushing for needs fulfillment, not a product fulfillment, not a service fulfillment, not a function fulfillment, but a needs fulfillment in the sustainable public procurement. So you don't buy a product anymore. You don't buy a service anymore. You don't even buy a functionality, but a function. You fulfill a need. Yeah. Most commonly, buyers check the previous standard documents, making small adjustments and sending it out. And that's pretty much what Felipe say. Yeah, we do the same in Brazil. But we do, do it with uh, dancing samba or something like that. It is very, very unusual to discuss the requirements that should be included and consider uh, considered the knowledge that the supplier is not. So you, collaboration is not there, more or less putting it there. And then those two ladies, great ladies. If you haven't talked to them, talk to them. Not right now, please, because I might get upset. They came out with this innovation for regional growth given by public procurement project. And you know where you are, regional Yevle Boy. You took the train over here from Orlando out the car. And it's a Swedish county council that has regional development organization with 10 municipalities and a huge quantity of 200, 285,400 inhabitants and probably 401 because one of our colleagues just had a baby yesterday. So we are a big county, right? Uh, the project was run between January 2016 and October 2019. And the aim of the project was to create possibilities for small companies and innovators in the region to take part in the public market and generate development and innovation in the public sector. You probably cannot see, but that's kind of in the county where we are. And the blue one is the Baltic Sea, I think. Uh, it was driven by two facilitators, yeah? And based on the Frame Lake model, I have no idea about what that means, but ask them about it. Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, talk about it. Uh, where sustainability is a prerequisite and indicator of project success. The framework model is a holistic working model that ensures that the needs of the public procurement process become known to the clients, procurers, and suppliers. So now, instead of just talking about products or technical specifications, we talk about needs. Whoa, what you crazy or what women? Totally, yeah, yeah. They've gone not one step, not a tiny little step. They've gone, it was a massive leap for humankind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had too much sugar in the morning. They ate my cake. So according to the Frame Lake model, the stakeholders involved in the process need to be highly skilled for meeting individual people in a professional manner respectful professional manner based on their prerequisites and context. So you need to have people who know what they're doing in order to talk about what they should be doing, right? Fantastic, obvious. And the model describes the need identification process. So forget about the products, forget about the services. Tell me what your needs are. Now we can talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but that's another topic about in the pre-process so that the real needs of all the different stakeholders involved with an explicit focus on end users, not the buyer, not the supplier, but who the hell is going to be using those things and who the hell is going to be receiving the, the wrath of Thor in the lightning strikes. So the end users. Okay, you have Bolnas, a city... Uh, that way, okay. Uh, the north of Yevle, north west, northwest, north northwest. Uh, it's about ninety kilometers from here, hundred and ten kilometers from here. Take the the fast route. You take the long, the slow route. You'll find a lot of cyclists and a couple of deer over there. Not all deer, just deer. Okay. It has twenty seven thousand inhabitants. And in the beginning of 2017, Bolnas municipality had a need for changing all ceilings and lighting in schools and preschools. Now I, I got it right here. Huh? So we need to change the lighting in schools. What do we do? Just go buy, you all go to uh, Media Mark, buy a couple of light bulbs and uh, pops your uncle. No, they are starting looking for more cost-effective solutions and setting up luminaires from different suppliers to evaluate 
the light and gain a better understanding for what was on the market. Now, buyer, supplier. And they focus on LED lighting. Since it was considered appropriate future lighting, reducing energy costs to at least 50%, if not more. But of course, as you know, they tend to be much more expensive upfront in the beginning, but they can last for several years. It was clear that the municipality that they wanted to procure LED lighting, but they had to start considering renting light or lacing light or whatever you want to call it, instead of buying the lamps, the luminaires. At the same time, the project worked with one of the companies that Bolas municipality tested lighting and the project members became aware that the Bolas municipality wanted to procure light in a new way. And that's where four comes in. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have your procurement process, collaboration team, pre-knowledge in Bolas municipality, supplier meetings, uh, tender specifications, technical, non-technical and social, collaboration team. We have two collaboration teams, great and ongoing follow-up and evaluation process. If you want to read about that, we have a book chapter, not in this book, that's in another book, uh, and you can read more details about that. What did we learn? That we need commissioned facilitators. You can call them commissioned facilitators, facilitators or two really crazy ladies, that's another point. Uh, and the success depends on the people who are in the process and how they interact with each other based on a common goal, collaboration, common goal, different perspectives. So we have time dimension going back to yesterday, okay? And the entire procurement process took about one year from the startup to complete agreement and collaboration takes time. It takes sometimes a lot of time. And the decision on anchorage in the municipality at all levels takes time. Working according to universal design, again, is something that I have absolutely no clue what, what that means, but they can tell you all about it. Yeah, a little bit. And this um, collaboration between different professions and stakeholders that leads to better effect and outcomes from the municipality with many more added values, but products and services must be seen in a broader perspective, not even a function. Now we're talking needs. We have increased knowledge in the municipality, but also to the uh, facilitators. So everybody involved increases their knowledge. Talk about collaboration again. Yeah. We established a collaboration team. Well, they established a collaboration team. And then they brought me around. But they took me by the ear and said, no, you're part of this. And once you're in, it's like Hotel California. You can never leave. Uh, the facilitator needs to have a leading part in the process. And the collaboration team has the support process and the collaboration team needs to be supported by a reference person from academia. That's when they pull me by the ear. And the commercial and industrial life, administrative authority, civil servants, politicians, so everybody needs to be involved. So that's why we call it a quintuple a helix. We also have to define and assign tasks and responsibilities. So it's not just come join Sapiens and that you'll, you'll be happy. No, come join Sapiens, you have something to do. Yeah? You have something to do. And then we have what's the traditional public procurement. We have the improved support, the improved procurement. And then we have a now crazy type of thing that you have instead of just a procurer and buyer, now we have university, we have environment, we have the supply, we have civil society in a quintuple helix kind of thing, just habracadabra, hocus pocus, and off you go. So that's where we need to focus on. And Remember this one? Now we need to change to that and but even to that. See the difference? Yeah. Okay, so before we had collaboration between just the supplier and the buyer, and now we have to have the collaboration between the buyer, the supplier, the facilitators, and the university. Of course, that's what you need systems thinking for. Do you think that we were just giving you lessons for the sake of giving you lessons? We were preparing you, you know, like we were giving you this and this and this and this. Yes, it's damn complicated. Yes, but sustainability is already damn complicated. Economic, environmental, social, time dimension, interlinkages, civil society, public sector organizations, companies, uh, hybrid things, all interconnected, individuals, groups, organizations, the organizational systems, and blah, 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 blah. And then you put everybody together and you go, whoa. Yep. So we have those things. We'll come to questions shortly in these slides.
if you don't mind. So we have an innovative procurement where we have the companies participating in the project can gain an increased insight and knowledge on the public market, which can generate business growth and economic sustainability in the region. Very important because the region is important here. We have a better effect, a more value for money, for tax money for the public sector. We have products and services that, adjust, that are adjusted to the public sector needs, create better facilities for small companies to deliver the, to the public market in the process of the public procurement, adjust functional requirements to the procurement process, and we can identify needs, needs, not products, not services, not function, but needs. We take into context the environment. We have a cross-skilled, cross-disciplinary, transdisciplinary team. We collaborate with the suppliers before, during, and after the procurement process. So it's not just, I buy my product and that's it. No, it's before, once you buy it, after you buy it. And we have a collaboration between the public, the private, and, and, and end users. Very important. Also, the end users need to be involved. So the kids in the school and the teachers in the school needs to be involved in this so that everybody is happy. And we need collaboration for all of this. And in collaboration, we have benefits and we have challenges, of course, because Maria talked about collaborations, <laughs> benefits and challenges and elements and a bunch of other things. And that continues throughout the entire contract period. So it's not just buy and that's it. You buy and you're responsible for the fulfillment of needs. Not just for photocopying, but the fulfillment of needs. And it is written in the agreement. And if you don't like the agreement, take it to the lawyers. No? But take it to Peter before. Okay. Thank you very much. You have a question. And we have a, a microphone in charge person. Just throw it. Just throw it. Have you ever done? They have. Can you manage? Yeah. They're going to the second round. That's all news. What I'm telling you is all news. I'm not kidding. I told you they are great. I'm not saying Peter and Kate are not great. They're great for other things. Yes. So we go from lighting to textiles. So that's who's the god of textiles? Freya? Sigrid. Sigrid. <laughs> that's the goddess. But... Because they're great, they're great facilitators. I mean, they, they, uh, when when I invite, when they first invited, we we ran across in, in near my building, uh, where my office is, and a colleague said, "You need to meet each other. You're absolutely crazy, the three of you." I said, "I'm not. Everybody else is." And then we started talking and said, "Yeah, we have this information. They know a lot about the details of this project. I know kind of the." theoretical part and I put up the quintuple helix, but they've done it. As Peter and Kate have done great things in what they do in the stakeholder collaboration. That's why we invite people who have done it. And that's why we link it with theory. It is possible, it's being done. Uh -huh. Can I ask you? Yes. Uh, Just press it for a few seconds. Okay. Yep. Yes, I wanted to ask you concrete, concretely, Oh, I'm just completely, uh, collaboration. How do you do that? Like, how did you institutionalize collaboration? Do you have kind of meetings with all the stakeholders? Uh, what, what was the, yeah. They, they had already finished the project when they invited me to, to collaborate in that way. So they'll be here for FICA. They can answer a lot of questions. We still have about 15 minutes before FICA, before coffee break, but they've done it as Peter and Kate have done other things, as partner organizations have done other things. And that's why we invite them to show you that it is possible. And if you can have a mic to Peter, please. Um, 
It's not. This is the law of handball. No one can do this. This is people like Eason, this is people like Chase, or me, maybe. This is completely useful to us. They don't know what to what to, to do, uh, or they have done it. They don't know what. They will struggle. You will struggle. That's that's the learning process that I have talked about and we talked about. And actually, the problem is much more complex. <laughs> the the very strong point is so. Why did we learn, for example, in the beginning we thought there are two groups? That's one group. We learned yes, but then there are within this group there are the guys that do the tender, and then there are the guys that do the content management. And it's the good groups. And very, very often they don't talk to each other, although they sit in the same office. But they made them sit in the same office. Yes. It will fail. You set it up again. It will fail the best. You can fail in your case the first time. Oh, and the third time and the second time. They are not used to talking to each other. Why should I talk to Mr. or Mrs. It's hard. And it's you have to model through. Yes, and and you have to be very stubborn. You have to be, I would say, persistent. That's yeah. a bit more politically correct word. And it's very complex. And on top of that, it becomes a bit more complex for you because on top of that, you have to add theories for your PhD. So you have to think about, am I talking about social contract theory coming from, who was it, Rousseau? Well, yeah, I can use that one, but can I use it? Can I use the quintuple helix? Can I use collaboration theory? Can I use assessment and reporting, life cycle assessment, life cycle thinking? So take whatever they have to offer in their board, board, board groups are really great. Take it, talk to them and see how you can you know, uh, pick their brains that is, as it is said in English and not do it in other literally. It's not very nice, but pick the brains, talk to them and see what you can learn, see what you can you know, bring to your PhDs. In the case of Felipe, he's very lucky. He has them as, as, as you know, he doesn't have that's not very lucky for him. <laughs> because he can talk to them in a, I mean, he takes, he takes the car, takes the train, he can visit them in Bolnos or whenever, and he can have access to the to the region. And he's going to go to the electronic swatch. But all of you are very lucky in the way that you have a lot of partner organizations that we've opened the doors, Sapiens has already opened the doors of access which is, believe you in me, extremely difficult to do research. So, so difficult. So take advantage of those open doors. Talk to the people, not only to the, the ones that you're going to be doing with secondments. Talk to the people who are coming here to talk to you and provide their expertise to you. Yeah? What helps is leadership. So if you have, say, a mayor, that decides or a, or a city council that say we want to be sustainable and we want to procure sustainable, that helps. It will not do it, but it helps. However, it does not mean that uh, top down and uh, bottom up process wouldn't work. They just they need that it's one person and at a different time it's crazy enough to do this. And we know it's about um, about the industry that we combine. Both both are important. The leadership, but I think even just the leadership. If you have a leadership that does not care, nothing will ever happen because you have to fight it. Now, now he's really selling my organizational change management course for sustainability because we talk about also leadership top and approach, bottom up approach. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. No. Okay. I don't know what you break it. Uh, I wanted to ask you, are you like lawyers? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so because I will tell you, I have a different case because um, 
problems while reading a lot of theory of the evolution of the human and the therapies so now it's the main idea is to make it more simple, not to make it very complex. However, during my secondment, I, I just said that there's a problem now, and I discovered that if you do it, if you oversimplify it, you will create two methodological problem case. So I don't know, this is probably more about the stakeholders than the process itself, because the process was made simple, however, the stakeholders engage, it's better if they have like we have bigger tools and more skills, right? Not the process itself. So I, I... I think you you are full of questions. I mean, I really, really encourage you to grab them now in the coffee and ask them for the email. And then you can have a more convers uh, lengthier conversation in that way. Because I, I can see you full of doubts. And I can see them really wanting to help. But I can see also the rest of the people saying, we need coffee, man. Yeah. So. I, I need to, to facilitate the collaboration between everybody else. Uh, so, does anybody else have other questions? Yep. Yes. So we have two questions here. Yeah. Well. There was a presentation. Oh. Most of these projects that we need to look at in the sector that are here in the United States or the United But I was curious about the participation of the international participation in terms of global participation, whatever we need to call it. I'm really curious about the fact that maybe at the end, the concept of the international conference that we can participate for the industry. They know all the details. Can you give them the? Oh. Yeah. 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 And that all of the projects now are going to work there. So this has been spread a little bit still as new teachers, but for viewers, they can't actually read it. Uh, there will be more knowledge about the process. So that we did in an ordinary process. I need to talk to you about the very big model. And if we are lucky, someone actually thinks that they make more of this with a workpiece to be able to ask you the details. Yeah. And they also collaborate with a couple of people from the University of Yevle. I don't know them. I mean, I know them, but I don't like them a lot. And mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, there are two uh, two answers to that. One is the simple answer, and the other one is the bit less simple answer. The more simple answer is that we were four people, five people in the book chapter, uh, two from the university, Sigrid and Annette, and a lawyer. That's the simple answer. Okay. Talking on the edge of the legislation, the legislation of the thing is going to be. So, to be honest, we don't know we are doing only five years. So, the whole capital is going to be a lot of the problem. Not a person who is coming in and saying yes or no. Has to be a part. And we've been talking about that since yesterday. Sapiens shouldn't really be about I'm a non-lawyer or you're a lawyer or I'm a non-engineer. We are all sapiens and we should all be working towards transdisciplinary approaches for sustainable public procurement. Of course, each of you are going to have to you know, um, have a specialization in your PhD. 
But hey, I started as a chemical engineer. Now I, uh, the only thing I don't do is legal issues. I do history, I do whatever it is. So, and I have to touch on legal issues. I've written papers that are related to, to the law. I mean, it took me about three years to read just one paper, but that's another point. But let's stop talking about, I'm a lawyer, you're a lawyer, I'm a non-lawyer. Hey, you know, we're all in this thing. I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, but let's stop. They stopped using that language because that language is really not inclusive and is really not collaborative. We are all parts of sapiens. So let's all work together and say, yeah, we're part of sapiens. We all move together. Yeah, I might get my PhD from a law faculty or from an engineering faculty, but at the end of the day, you're part of this. So we're all working towards sustainable public procurement. That's it. And then, because you also mentioned, uh, we've also mentioned many times the lawyers, the term in this discussion, and also people also mentioned it's learning process, it's doing something new. So I'm wondering, when you say lawyers are involved in this case, you mean practitioners or or, or professors or researchers from the academia? Both. Are we all thinking it's quite different? Uh, they had lawyers from both, from practitioners and academia, but what I'm really telling all of you is that Hey, let's talk to each other. When I was doing chemical engineering, and I, I was back in you know, La Boise, I was still alive. I was told chemical engineers are the best in the world. There's nothing better than a chemical engineer. Wrong. Wrong. Because yes, we do, we're good to build up uh, chemical plants. We're very good at that. But then we need an accountant to tell us how much taxes we have to pay. We need a lawyer to tell us, hey, you're messing it up. We need a theologist to tell us, oh yeah, but you know, is there one God or three gods or whatever it is. We need everybody and having those transdisciplinary approaches, collaborative approaches that we've been talking throughout yesterday and today. And that's what I'm saying. Hey, let's not use the, I'm a lawyer or I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, but you're a lawyer, I'm an engineer, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a that. So what? So what? Let's all work together and make these and make sure that each of you ESRs get a PhD in whatever faculty, whatever decision you want to make the best that you can. So we can try to provide you knowledge on theories, knowledge on methods, but also practical knowledge of three, Sigrid and Annette and Peter and Kate and, and, and John and James. So let's do it like that. And from now on, I really encourage you to stop using the term, I'm a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. I think one of the questions I can read with this course is that you are always kind of simulating seeing that you're doing this. You're kind of an engineer, you have legal experts, you have economists. This is how we will be working in the future. You will have lawyers. Exactly, but we need to find a common language. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we are finding a common language. Yes, but that's what we have been setting up the definitions since ATC 1, ATC 2, now uh, 3, and now 4. And when Hyphen was talking about life cycle assessment last uh, ATC, you were probably like, what? But now you know at least the basic principles of L LCA. I mean, I've tried to downgrade the LCA to absolute principles. And Maria has to try to do the things with collaboration theory. And she's done the same thing with EMS. And we've tried to make a lot of things that are PhDs and full profession, professors are on EMS, on this and that, to bring it down to everybody saying, like, we know that you need to have at least the basic knowledge on all of these things. Yeah, you might know a lot more here or a lot more there, but the basic knowledge for sapiens is on SPP. When I told you so public procurement, I didn't know anything about public procurement until I got engaged. Now I know a little bit, okay? And I know a little bit of the law of public procurement, which is nothing compared to what you know. But when it comes to the assessment and reporting, what you know is nothing compared to what I know. But we can talk now. We can talk about assessment and reporting. We all agree now that in sustainability, we have, what was it? Four dimensions economic, environmental, social, the time dimension, and the interlinkages, that we need life cycle thinking, that we need systems thinking, that we need collaboration. Whatever you call it, it's a different thing. Just 
No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking it as an attack, okay? But it's what I've been hearing since ATC1, since you're the lawyers, you're the economist. I'm not an economist. Maria is an economist and a lawyer. Okay, she might be double warming crazy. That's another point. Uh, but let's stop this conversation of I'm a lawyer, I'm an engineer. No, we are here. Let's all learn from each other and let's move forward. Whether you need an engineering something, I mean, we were talking to a secret on the net before I started talking. We're talking about chemical leasing. Chemical leasing is a proposal by UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, that says for chemicals, you have two options, science, technology, or regulation. Regulation, reach Thomas Jakob in Austria, father of, of um, reach, grandfather of reach. But you need to say, we can do a business model. We can do a business model where you have a buyer and a supplier, but not governmental, okay? You have a buyer, normal buyer, and a supplier of chemicals. How can we do so that we, instead of selling kilograms or tons of a chemical, we can rent the chemical and we do chemical leasing. And now that's a trademark of UNIDO. And I was talking to them about it because they need that information for another project. I said, yeah, but I have that information. I've been working with that. And you have that information and you have that information. And you have another information and you have another information. So let's change information. Let's collaborate and say, hey, you know, I know some things. I, there's a billion things that I do not know, but I'm very curious about mm, not a billion things, but maybe one nine hundred ninety-nine thousand blah 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 blah. So let's collaborate. Let's stop this non-lawyer, lawyer, non-engineer, engineer. We are sapiens. You have to do your PhD. Take advantage of your partner organizations. Take advantage of the people who are co-working with you, the other ESRs, but also your supervisors, co-supervisors, and the people who are around here to provide you with information and knowledge that we have been developing. And I think it's time for FICA because I'm starting to go. Don't eat my cake. <laughs>